2010 National Alumni Association Joe Bell Memorial Award is presented to Michael Vihar. For years, it's been hard to catch up with the 2005 industrial engineering technology graduate and longtime Ethos volunteer, Michael Vihar. He's been in Guatemala, Bolivia, Nicaragua, and Kettering Laboratories. But it's even harder to keep pace with his ambitions, improving quality of life, reducing mankind's environmental footprint, and attracting new talent to sustainable engineering. We are developing engineers who really care about the world, its resources, and its people, Michael says of Ethos, the engineering service learning program that now sends 25 students a year on service and cultural immersions. Michael took his first of three Ethos assignments in 2004, tromping through the sweltering Amazon rainforest and climbing Bolivian plateaus to deliver flashlights, demonstrate rocket stoves, and install photovoltaic lighting. His motivation is to reverse some startling statistics. Indoor air pollution is responsible for 2.2 million deaths each year. Worldwide, it's the leading cause of death among children younger than five. Ethos is changing these statistics, Michael says. For that reason, students who participate are transformed personally and professionally. They become leaders who value both innovation and justice. Michael's fellow alumni say that's exactly what happened to him. After earning a master's in engineering management, he's now helping Native American tribes to create sustainable energy plans. Michael still coaches Ethos students, and he sees that they are making a difference. It's clear to the National Alumni Association that Michael is too. In honor of Joe Bell's commitment to the community and giving back in the Marinus tradition, the National Alumni Association is proud to present Michael Vihar with this year's Joe Bell Memorial Award. I'd like to start out by thanking Dr. Curran, Linda Burning, and the rest of the Alumni Association for this award. I'm truly honored to be here this evening receiving this 2010 Joe Bell Memorial Award. I would also like to congratulate Richard, Tony, Sharon, and Ronald on their awards, and I'm humbled to be part of such a distinguished group. It feels great to be back at home at our alma mater, the University of Dayton. Joe Bell was an enthusiastic and inspiring individual that left a lasting impression on the University of Dayton. He truly lived out the Marianist charism of community, faith, and service, and I was told had a profound impact on the students and faculty that knew him. We have all experienced the student neighborhood that Joe helped create. As fellow flyers, we understand the sense of community that the ghetto exemplifies. I am honored to be receiving this award in his memory and I hope that I lived and continue living with the passion and enthusiasm that Joe had for the people around him. For most of this, us in this room, UD has helped shape our lives and careers. It is a place where young minds are challenged and empowered to dream of a better future. I stand here today because in 2001, a group of engineering students led by Bob Howley, Jason Hewitt, Garrett Prom and my sister, Christine Vihar Judy, made their dream a reality and created the University of Dayton Ethos Program. For those of you that don't know, the Ethos Program provides service learning and immersion internships for students that support the advancement of appropriate technologies for developing countries. Each student that participates is required, is immersed in a new culture, works with a community or non-governmental organization, and lives with a host family. In 2002, this student-created organization sent five students to Nicaragua to work with improved stoves, thanks to the help of Chris Schmidt and Dr. Kevin Hallinan. By 2004, Bill Egger and Dr. Margie Pinnell grew the program to 15 students reaching five Latin American countries. Today, thanks to the effort and continued support of Brother Phil Aaron, Charlie Schreier, Drs. Joe and Tony Saliba, Dr. Malcolm Daniels, Kevin Fisher, Mark Ewalt, and myself, the Ethos program now sends over 25 students to communities in Africa, Asia, Latin America, and also right here in the United States. Some, of, some examples of the appropriate technologies that our students have helped design and improve are wood-burning stoves, solar ovens, water systems and filters, solar lighting systems, 
and the list goes on. As an undergraduate in 2004, the Ethos program provided me the opportunity to travel to Bolivia to work with wood-burning stoves and solar ovens. I returned to UD with a lasting impression of what life is like in the developing world. A better idea of what I could provide to humanity as an engineer and a passion to do more. It's this transformation that I hoped every Ethos student experienced and is what drove me to pursue the position of Ethos graduate student director. As the director, I remember promoting the program with Brother Phil, saying to students, if you don't want your life to be changed, then definitely don't do ethos. Here are some examples of the exceptional students that I had the privilege of mentoring. Lori Hanna made three trips to Nicaragua. In that time, she researched solar autoclaves to sterilize medical supplies and started a nonprofit with five other UD students called Salud del Sol, or Health from the Sun. In rural clinics throughout the developing world, it is very common for surgeries to be performed with contaminated instruments because of the lack of electricity and sterilization equipment in the nearby area. Salud del Sol promotes the research and implementation of solar autoclaves in rural Nicaragua. They have won a Jimmy Carter Award and also won the UD Business Plan Competition. Students Justin Forzano, Mark Ewalt, Haley Reichman, Liz Kovalek, and Marissa Dow designed a water catchment, system, catchment and distribution system in a rural area in Cameroon that had no access to clean water. The next year, they raised $18,000 and returned to Cameroon to build the water system and point of use filters with the families of that community. The project was designed from start to finish as a collaboration of UD students and the community of Kumba. This town now has clean, accessible water. UD with the help of the Ethos program, also shaped my growth as a student and career as a professional. My original experiences in Bolivia, Bolivia challenged me to do more, particularly to help eliminate indoor air pollutants caused by traditional wood-burning stoves. I continued in 2006 by raising $13,000 and creating the Bolivia Project with Colin Welly. Colin, Chris Phillips, and I, all UD graduates, we're directly involved in promoting, educating, and building over 360 solar cookers with rural Bolivian families. Needless to say, over the six months, our Spanish improved. <laughs> as a graduate student, I worked for the Ethos program as its student director. Looking back, I believe that I share the passion that Joe Bell had with working with students. I did my best to inspire them to realize how they can uniquely contribute to the world. I still am in communication with past and current Ethos students to help guide them in their experiences. My journey has now taken me to the Department of Energy in Denver, Colorado, where I manage government grants for Native American nations. Next week, I will spend in Navajo country in Arizona, helping them develop a project with solar systems for tribal homes that are still not connected to the grid. In continuing my international work, Two weeks from now, I will be traveling to Guatemala to visit my friends and marrying his partners. Together, we started a company called Energy Soluciones, a grassroots solar company that will provide affordable and sustainable lighting solutions for people without electricity. I hope to continue working with UD, its students, alumni, and faculty in the future. I am honored to receive this award, but it would not have been possible without all the people that have helped the Ethos program engineering program and, get, and UD get to where we are today. I want to thank the faculty, administration, and students that, of UD that make it such a welcoming and inspiring place. I want to thank my brothers Kenny and Ryan and my sister Christine. To my parents Eileen and Ray, the two most humble, loving, and inspirational people in my life. Thank you. In closing, sitting here in this ballroom with delicious food and clean water being served to us in pitchers, I would like to take a moment to reflect on those less fortunate than us. Ethos provided me the opportunity to live, play soccer, and share, and share meals with people that I now consider great friends. Living with my host families gave me a new perspective on what it's like to live for many people in this world.
I watched Edmund come home, Edwin come home from school, not to do his homework right away, but to grab his machete and help his father in the field. Later that night, Edwin did his homework by candlelight. I watched Elisa spend all day in her home, standing over a smoky fire, making sure that she had meals cooked for her husband and children. I watched Julia, 10 years old, walk a long distance to collect river water for her family every morning. I remember sharing meals of beans, rice, and tortillas with Edgar's family day after day, not because they love beans, rice, and tortillas, but those are the only food that they can afford and is readily available to them. Meat to them is a delicacy and can only be enjoyed during the holiday season. I spoke with Byron, a 12-year-old boy, heading out to collect a cord of wood, which he later carried home on his back. I saw Anita, a nine-year-old Bolivian girl who was crippled, being pushed around in a wheelbarrow by her mother because they couldn't afford to get her a wheelchair. It's realities like these that drive students to impact the world in ways that they originally did not anticipate. Anita now has a wheelchair. Dr. Margie Pinnell summarized the ethos experience best when she said, students head out to change the world, but it ends up that the world changes them. Our fellow flyers are helping people in developing nations meet their basic needs. They're providing hope for the future and in turn are graduating with a better understanding of their unique vocation. It is my hope that these UD students will go on to be leaders of the next generation. I believe Joe Bell would agree that we are privileged to be here today as UD alumni. And this privilege instills a responsibility in each one of us. A responsibility to help those less fortunate than ourselves. A responsibility to serve, this, serve the world with our gifts and talents a responsibility to learn, lead, and serve. Thank you.